You'd never know there was a lathe back there. I think it's time to get rid of a few more scraps. I have a friend on Instagram who makes the most adorable little wooden lanterns. By the hundreds! I figured six was a slightly more manageable number. I needed some squared off materials for the post, so I started off by turning a scrap I had into about one and a half by one and a half inch. I made four lanterns one size, and then I had enough stock to make the next two slightly bigger. I just... variation. And I made sure to use the stop block so that all the posts would be the same length. Or so I thought. Until I realized it wasn't locked in place. So the shorter lanterns ended up being just a eighth of an inch shorter than I had intended. No one will notice. Since I'm making this entirely from scrap, everything was based off of whatever was in the pile. So the next step was to try and figure out how big of a base I actually wanted this thing to have. And it was more just trial and error and testing out. Yep, that looked good. Once I decided on my sizes, I once again used a stop block that was locked in place this time and just cut up the tops and bottoms for all my blocks. The next thing I did was glue up the body. So just a little bit of a light sand, some glue, and some nails just to hold it together so I could keep putting the rest of it together. I didn't really know what I wanted to do with the top yet at this point, or what I wanted to do with the feet, but the top and bottom of the body and the legs were all the same general dimension, so just nail them together. Since I wanted the post to be set in just slightly from the edge, I got a piece of scrap that was about a quarter of an inch thick to set it on top so that it would be recessed in just a little, and then I just spun it around and put all four posts in. I did the same thing again in order to put the top on, but this time it was a little more cumbersome to try and move everything around, but it worked. I started on the top next by just putting two more slightly smaller blocks on, kind of the same way I had done the treat bin in a previous video. Really simple and it just gives it a nice little touch at the top. I realized after I put all the tops on that the next part would have probably gone a little bit easier had I done it first. But we live and learn. The next pieces to go on were the feet, so balancing on that nice little top I just put on, I put them in place. Because I didn't want to risk splitting these things with the nail gun, I ended up just putting a little bit of glue, pressing them down nice and tight, and then turning them right side up, just so that the weight of the lantern would hold it in place while gluing. It didn't need much, and these things aren't exactly about to be stood on, so... And there you have it! cute little lanterns. Now at this point you could paint them and distress them. I decided to light mine on fire. Now don't get me wrong, this is an extremely fun way of finishing something, but it actually is a legitimate way of finishing a piece of wood, especially if you want it for an outdoor use. What happens is the flames actually burn out just a little bit of the sapwood, raising the grain, so giving it a really cool texture. 
but the sapwood is what's more susceptible to actually rotting outside. Once you're done burning a section, you take a wire brush, either an attachment on a drill bit or just a wire brush that you can use with your hand, and you brush out as much as you can all of the soot. It's an extremely messy process and I highly recommend wearing a mask when doing this because that ash gets airborne really quickly. And that is my crispy little lantern. It's kind of hard to see in the footage but it actually has raised a lot of the grain. And although I could sit there and scrub it a bit more and get a lot more of the ash and soot off of it, I kind of like the way that it looks right now. So I, what I ended up doing was just sealing it with a coat of varathane so that it wouldn't rub off in my hand every time I touched it. And there we have it. Now, you could leave it like this, or you could finish it in a different way. Or, if you have a friend over that has stencils at the time, and it's getting on Christmas, you could go a little crazy. There. Stenciled and, I guess, spackled is what you call it? I finished the other ones a little differently. Just a color wash, a light distressing, and then, well, I still stenciled them. So it was still a little crazy. If you want to see some more wood chip list videos, check out some of the links here. We've got projects and shop upgrades and all sorts of things. And lots more Christmas things to come. Tis the season. See you later. <laughs>